Yo, what's up, guys? I got a huge announcement to make. No skits today. We're just gonna go straight into the news, boys. Here it is. From now on, in every single... Hey, Triff! What do you want? I'm busy. I'm about to make an announcement. And who the hell are you? Dude, I'm Party Triff. I'm your alter ego. This announcement has absolutely nothing to do with partying. Now let the dickheads out of the way, I can finally tell you guys the announcement. Every single video this week, drum roll please, is going to feature- I know what the announcement is. Yeah, the announcement is if you don't get the hell off my channel, in two seconds, Trip MMA is about to make his debut. Now that both idiots are out of the way, I got a big announcement to make. Every single video for this week is gonna feature pendulums. Every video for the next seven days, pendulum only. Every video for the next seven days is gonna be all pendulums. Gotta stick to the basics. Pendulum Orcus is too powerful. One of the best decks in the game right now. So with that being said, let's get straight into the video. What better way to go back to basics than to go right back to the dueling book where it all started from. So Because back then we didn't really have the cards. But now we do. So... Modern problems require modern solutions. I mean, I own every single one of these cards, so why not? And by own, I mean borrow from my amazing sponsor, Game Nation. Do check them out, description below. Now, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out this amazing, beautiful trip gaming lecture my play mat right here in the description below. Let's get right into the video, guys. So first and foremost, 60 cards, perfection. There's a reason to the 60. I will explain everything in depth. If you have not already, go check out my combo tutorial video that I already posted. It's absolutely amazing. It'll show you guys how to put up seven interruptions, five of which are negates very easily. Now, we're going to get started quickly. I did make a few changes to the list, uh, but I'm going to explain as I go on. So, you want to max out every single turbo card in the game possible, even the pseudo turbo cards. Uh, there's a reason to all of them. Now, in this deck, you play a lot more spells than normal. I told you in the past, Abductor's okay, but not the best. I took it out in the past. But now you're playing so many spells in the deck that Abductor actually becomes a turbo card. You're playing more spells than ever before. Why? To ensure you're playing good cards. Green cards are good cards. Now, you look at cards like Ravine and think, hey, uh, Ash is going around everywhere. It's common now. But, hey, you know what? It doesn't matter. You have so many stuff in this deck that can get Ash that it doesn't matter. And you want more cards to discard. So because you're playing Orcas, Ravines are busted. Because I have an option of a Turbo card or a Distrudo, which going seconds busted. Or first for the Turbo card, the Dark Horse busted. And you discard the cards like the Orcas card. So it gives you a lot more discard fodder, which lets your deck run so much smoother. And there is really, even Dragon Orcas is good because... Dragon Orcus lets you go into your combo without Mermaid, which is always good in case they have an influx amount of hand traps. So as you see here, 21 turbo cards, all right? 12, 16, 21. These are the best 21 cards in the deck, all right? If you draw one of these 21 in conjunction with any four cards, you ought to win. Doesn't matter how many Orcus cards you have. You're going to have two of them. You're going to ravine one of them away and you just pen some in the other. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter what you draw. The levels, the, uh, the Orcus are just monsters you're going to link with anyways. So even if you draw them, it doesn't matter. So these are 21 turbo cards. And in a 60-card deck, it's uh, non-negotiable. You need to play all 21. And the Strudo Mammer is too powerful not to run. It's just too good, especially when you OTK people. So going first, you put up 7 negates. Going first, you auto-win. I don't care what anyone says. Going first, you auto-win with this deck. You put up 90-90 boards. It doesn't break. doesn't matter what you draw. If you, if you draw one, even if they hand trap, doesn't matter. One Orcus card it gives you the combo, even if you only pen some in two monsters anyways. Uh, so next you want to show your scales, right? So like I said, everything gets ash anyway. So having more stuff than gash doesn't matter. And you want as many cards to discard, cards to the grave as possible. Because you have lots of great effects. Uh, where if you discard them to the grave, they get uh, secondary effects, obviously. So having pen call, dark room feels nice for a reason. So when you get to the ravine or pen call, it's amazing. Now, you always want to have magicians running in your scales. So these are the 12 best cards in the deck after turbo cards. 
Uh, it just ensures that you're gonna, always going to have access to harmonizing and magicians. Next, we play one of each of the other magicians. You do not need to play more no matter what. I don't even want to play more even with desires. They are not good at all. They are just there uh, to have pen call and wisdom. Search them. You want a different assortment of scales. You got three low, three high. That you want to get each have their own reason why you play them. Black Fang has lots of purpose in terms of bringing out Janky. I would only play these two if you play both of them. I would not play one of each. I will play one of each of these six and that's it. No doubles of any. The only reason Black Fang is here is to bring Janky back from the graveyard after I link with, uh, make absolute with him because Rusty is going to pop Black Fang. If you are not playing Rusty in your deck, do not play Black Fang in your deck. The only reason it is there is to pop it to bring back a free Janky. That is it. You are never going to use its actual effect. Otherwise, it's a waste of a card. And it's good to have another scale to go into uh, that's not in level 7. So you can ensure to get Absolute. Because going into Absolute is key in this combo. As I will explain again near the end if you haven't already seen the other video. So every single card here so far is beautiful and amazing. I love drawing every one of them, even Gazer Boy over there. Next, Double Jackal. Uh, in this combo, Jackal always gets two counters on it. So it's actually amazing. I even want to play three Jackals. But two is more than enough. You always get it. And if you already have access to harmonizing, Jackal is the next thing you said. With Electrum to ensure Jackal is always on board. Because they're always going to get a counter from this combo, which I'm going to show how to do. Next three, Dark Room, 1, Gate, 0. Really the only normal summon in the deck. I want to play Triple Bambuku just to get a free plus from it. As I did in the combo tutorial. Same with the DD cards. But I opted for uh, the Strudos and Yazis and Mir Mir and all that that whole combo in, instead of the whole normal summons because it gives you go a lot of, of plays going second. Next, the Distrudo Mir Mir I told you about. You have nine ways to send it with the Distrudo itself being ten. You got all these. You're always going to find a way to get it, especially the best is when you uh, orchest orchestrated return. You have so many of these in your deck, you're going to draw one. You're always going to access the Distrudo every, turn going, every time going first and every time going second. Is too good this format. Until Mary Mary gets banned, you gotta play this Strudo in your deck or else you're playing the wrong deck. Next, the orchestrated Orcus engine. Now, this is the correct engine of every single Orcus deck because you want one of each and then two just in case you draw one for Mermaid. I don't care what deck you're playing. If it does not have these Orcus cards, you're playing the wrong deck. This is the best engine in the whole game right now. There, nothing comes close to it. If I draw any of these three, it is equivalent of drawing Zodiac Rapier. You guys hear me? If you draw any of these three, it's the equivalent of drawing Zodiac Rapier. If you draw this, you simply Pendulum Summon it. If These two are the only cards that you do not want to draw. Regardless, you need to play them. And at the end of the day, you simply discard them with your 11 ways to discard cards, 6 pen calls, 2 ravines. Against Thunder Dragons, we side out the 6 pen calls and 2 terraformings, leaving 0 cards in your deck that search that are spell cards. Monster card that search don't matter. Amazing. This this engine truly broke pendulums. I'm going to show you why. Like, it doesn't break. Draw any of these three. Sorry, draw any of these three. You go into your combo even easier. There, You want to see these three. Draw this. You simply just link it away. These are the only ones that brick. Big deal. They don't even brick. It doesn't matter. You just discard them. Next. One boots, two fog blade. You don't need to play more. Don't play the rank up. You simply summon... Let me show you how many ways there are to clear this boy, uh, the rank ups, all right? Even in my side deck alone, which I'll explain later, there's infinite amount. And there's infinite more amount. Draw one of them, and all your negates are gone. Draw one Denko, all your interrupts are gone, and then they freely play and win. And when I face a rank up deck, I get so happy. Because look at what I side against any rank up deck, and it's not because they're a rank up deck. Draw any of these 10 and you win. And there's infinite amounts more that you can side. Just draw one of them, one. Or just one, and you win. That's why I hate rank up. It's so easily played around. Obviously, game one is the best, but your opponent's not playing anyways with the fog blades, and they're good going second. They're good going second. So this is correct, and no need for cloak. Next, some draw cards. Why not? It's good to play spell cards with uh, abductors. It just ensures that you're gonna uh, have more spells for abductor, and that is why you play the spells for abductor. And Allure also, just to get rid of random darks. Allure gets rid of those bricky, bricky darks. And Upstart, like I just said, need more spells for uh, Abductor. Uh, next, the will go Extra Deck. So tight. One of the most tightest Extra Decks I've ever seen for Pendulums. Electrum, and this is the Nightmare Engine. We don't play servers, no space. 
Mermaid, Phoenix Unicorn Mermaid. The combo resolves, revolves around Unicorn, and then you go into Mermaid. And Phoenix is there anyway, just in case you can't get the Unicorn for the Mermaid. One Galatea, one Sork for the combo. I tried taking a Sork and the Wand, but no, it's just too good not, uh, not to play. Uh, next, Underclock uh, Rusty. Sometimes when you get hand trapped up the butt, you want to have Underclock anyways. If your mermaid get, uh, yeah, if your mermaid gets ash or something, if you got, let's say you got ogred, and you can't put up a negate before you go mermaid, which ninety nine percent of the time you do, and then they ash that, then you go underclock, and then rusty, and you still end up on uh, a lot of plays. So it, it's important to have uh, one boral sword. We side boral load. I'll explain why later. That's all the links you play. Next, one evil storm nightmare, one Karen Gorgon. You need this could easily be. Uh, most people don't play this anymore, but I think circuits are extremely relevant. I don't know why people just thought the deck is dead. The links are incredible. You go into these almost every single game. Uh, first and second. And then, one he was on right... Oh, sorry. Underclock actually should be uh, Space Insulator. I have, there's no space for Link Karibo whatsoever. So, Insulator is actually Underclock because it has the option to be a pseudo Link Karibo. Uh, I know it's a Link 2 instead of Link 1, but it's token instead of not. And it's dark, so you can also go into Rusty with it. So, this should be a uh, Space Insulator. And typically, you don't need Link Karibo anyways. Uh, it just, uh, it's, you really don't. You need, you could not use it and still do what you want with the whole combo. Next, Evil Storm Nightmare, Karen Gorgon. Uh, this, you just need two Darks, two Dark Rank 4s. With Rusty, sometimes you need any Dark Rank 4 to pop, but sometimes when you Fog Blade them. And Karen Gorgon is infinitely better than Rebellion. Uh, Adas, or not Adas, it's like Supreme King Rebellion. It's good for OTK and all, but you can OTK them incredibly easy anyways. So you don't need help to OTK, and it is better to have... A lot of times you end on both of these, actually. You want more rank 4s, uh, so it's just better. Karen Gorgon is just better overall. You need help to OTK. Absolute Vortex, best part. You, the whole combo revolves around it. One Yazi. After Yazi, you just Nightmare Phoenix them, and then Boral Sword with a random monster laying around. I know you don't. there's only Karibos, but, but Space Insulator is more than enough. You can also draw off the Phoenix, and this should be a Boral Savage... I just don't have it. So this is Borlo Savage. Most plays, most turns end up on Vortex. This being Savage Dragon. A rank 4 of your choosing. A Jackal and two Fog Blades leaving 6 Negates. I will show you guys in another video. Three random hands in a row. That leads to, the, to 5 plus Negates guaranteed. Typically 6. 6. I'm going to go ahead and say 6. Three random hands in a row will give you six negates, guaranteed. Now, through any hand trap, this is the side deck for a reason for everything. Now, uh, against uh, Thunder Dragons, all right, this is Brio and Vorolo. These are the only cards that are relevant in your side deck. You simply side these and you auto win against Thunder Dragon. You take out, now you have eight cards that search in the deck. So you take out seven of them for these seven. They're good against Thunder Dragon and you don't want to see cards that search that are spells. Monsters that search aren't, or don't matter to take out. Against Strikers, you got these seven. Auto wins. Against uh, Thunders, these are the auto wins with three spheres also being auto wins. With Kaiju just being nice to have. Uh, and then next for uh, the deck you're going to be playing mostly, that's uh, Salaman Buys. Which is three Danko, three Reboot, all you need. Get rid of the three Fog Blade Engine and three random cards in the deck. Always keep Orcas in going second, always. They're too good going second. Uh, there's no reason to take them out. They help with OTK so much. So that is a deck profile, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to get my beautiful trip game play in the description. Hope you guys like the video. That was a mouthful. I try to get through that as soon as possible for you guys. I don't like 20-minute videos, so I try to cut it to like 13 or 14 or something. Let me know what you guys think. Try this deck out. It's absolutely nuts. It's absolutely insane. It's the best Pendulum deck this format. It's even better than Pendulum last format. Orcas gave it a whole new engine. That's insane. In the next video, I'm going to show you guys three random hands in a row with this deck and how absolutely busted it is. Hope you guys like the video. See you in the next video. Peace.